Hello everybody. I am Dr. Sashank Doshi. Uh, Non-stop editions, and let's have the headlines for the day. Uh, it is a historic day, and the historic day is that uh, we are recording one of the lowest numbers per day has gone down to only six thousand, and there are more than ninety-five thousand active cases, which is the lowest case load. Since the pandemic started of March 20, this Omicron uh, scare is a very much around. 23 cases are currently there in India. The global ground zero for Omicron outbreak that the variant is causing less severe disease. But it is too soon to draw conclusions. Out of uh, 29 were not on oxygen dependent. So obviously most of the admissions were incidental admissions. WHO today of course recommended that there is no use of uh, plasma therapy. WHO says world malaria is 14 million more cases in 2020 compared to 2019 and 69,000 more deaths and two-thirds of the additional deaths were leaked prevention and diagnosis due to the COVID pandemic. But today's topic is predominantly Omicron, the Indian perspective. Uh, you know that Omicron is uh, a uh, hotspot in India, mindful of and careful of. And uh, we have joined with us by best uh, foremost intensivist in the country. He is a senior vice medical care medicine. He has a dual appointment. He is in academic Australia. He's very well trained. He's a chief of critical care at Portis Group. And uh, he's involved with both national and uh, state task force for COVID management. And today, before Dr. Rahul Pandit, I asked him a couple of questions on COVID and his impressions. Uh, we both were in the meeting of the WHO and he will give uh, from the clinicians of South Africa. But uh, one thing is there that uh, which come in everybody's mind on Omicron. Number one, uh, on the microbiology, on the molecular front, the mutations are 50. So people say, oh my God, you know, so many mutations, so scary. So first thing is that in South Africa, there is community transmission. Rest of the world, UK, probably there is community transmission. Rest of the world, the community transmission may or may not be there. So we don't know. Secondly, uh, more than 17,000, we need to be vigilant. We need to do our track and trace very well. We have to congratulate government of India and government of state governments for actively handling issues. We have genomic labs in place. We have agent deletion mutations in place. So what is Omicron? Number one, will it replace Delta? Answer is we don't know. Is it more transmissible than Delta? Probably yes. Will it than Delta? Probably not. Early data. Okay. Uh, will it uh, cause immune escape? Uh, or will it cause reinfection? Maybe. And is it really transmissible? More transmissible. In So actually there are more question marks and less answers. Number one is what is published in published literature. Nothing is published in published literature. Number two is anecdotal evidence like hearsay. Then, of course, there is informed speculation. And then there is wide speculation. So, don't get panicky at all. We need to be cautious, number one. Number two, probably whatever we are talking today is based on anecdotal evidence, coordination and discussion and dialogue with South African doctors and on informed speculation. So, don't get misled. And finally, behave responsibly, mask appropriately and double mask, which Dr. Rahul and me have been propagating, and fundamentally vaccinate totally. So having said that, my first uh, insights will come from Professor Pandit today. He will give us, he is just a half an hour back, the WHO expert group for clinicians met and uh, the clinical uh, people from South Africa spoke. He is going to give us the first insights on that. So let us hear that from Dr. Rahul Pandey. Good evening, sir. And uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. Professor Shang Joshi, Padma Shri Award uh, recipient, a famous endocrinologist. And um, he is also on the World Diabetic Association as the president of that IDF president. And obviously, he is the leading member of the Maharashtra COVID Task Force. He's the voice of Maharashtra COVID Task Force. Um, so we both were there on this WHO meeting not long ago. And uh, two people spoke. One was Dr. Valsa and the other was Dr. Fardin. And both of them gave insights in adult as well as pediatric uh, population. So some of the big highlights for me were, one, the patients who were ad admitted in the adult hospitals or the adult population, majority of them, almost 75% of them did not require oxygen. Almost 65% of them were incidental COVID patients. That means they have come for, for, for some surgery and they were found to have COVID positive and that's why they were admitted. 
there were patients who were admitted in the intensive care of the two who were admitted in intensive care one was admitted because of a um, cerebral bleed and was found to be covid positive so not predominantly covid pneumonia but the second patient did have a significant amount of covid pneumonia bilateral and was requiring um, non invasive ventilation so we are getting they are getting some patients with omicron who have a potential to worsen but here is the caveat all the patients who were sick and required admission because of covid 19 in the hospital were unvaccinated none of the patients who were vaccinated actually required admission to the hospital and i specifically asked them which vaccines do they take and the healthcare workers were given johnson and johnson in south africa and uh, the rest of the population has been given um, the mrna vaccine from pfizer but only 30% odd population has been vaccinated so just uh, like any other big country uh, india is in a better situation we are almost 50% population is vaccinated who are eligible to take a vaccine i think that's very important thing to do another thing which is very very concerning is that almost 30% of the people were young below 50 years of age and almost 20% of the people were who were positive were children below 10 years of age so out of 2300 samples almost 490 patients were children majority of them did not require admission majority of them did not require hospitalization none of them reported a multi systemic inflammatory syndrome which we know as mis in children however it is a concern that we have got this sizable population which is positive Now, why does it make a difference to us we probably know that children don't get enough um, uh, response from covid in terms of their um, you know um, severity of illness because of the natural protection which they have but but my concern is that these children are at home they are with their parents who may be having immunocompromised state diabetes hypertension maybe a cancer survivor maybe a cancer patient grandparents who are always fond of kids or of grandkids who um, who play with them and they may be a close contact and we may actually have a transmission so i think we need to have a very strong uh, basis here to understand that children could be one of the one of the reasons why the disease may actually spread um, if at all it comes across to the country and um, i think these were the main highlights of 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 that meeting so my take away from that meeting was it's still early days we need to wait for a couple of weeks or maybe 3 weeks of four weeks to understand whether now unvaccinated children or people are the one who are still getting admitted or we are getting elderly who are vaccinated or immunocompromised who are vaccinated who are now coming into the hospital i think that uh, that uh, part needs to be still answered well so my submission here is please 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 go ahead and take your vaccine don't have any thoughts around that every vaccine which is made available in india, in india is is very very effective and it seems that even with omicron we will have a very good protection at least looking at the data which has come out from south africa on the who platform so i can vouch for the authenticity of the data they were not just giving out a news report these were doctors working on ground on ground people in the hospital they have given out this data so my plea to everyone please vaccinate and of course as uh, professor joshi mentioned double masking for everyone and uh, n95 mask for healthcare worker so sir i think we got our first question from nandlal Sh- uh, sharda ji foreigners get checked up before flight again on landing he's rechecked even found negative at both ends why is they ask why are they been asked for quarantine i think that's a basic question which many people are asking it may not be related to foreigner but it could be related to a lot of family members who are returning from abroad right now we've all got some family members coming down for the holiday season um who we know or maybe maybe who we who somebody we know has got some family coming in so i just want this question to be answered from you sir very effectively that why is quarantine needed so remember that uh, the incubation period of sars cov2 is usually 6 to 7 days in the delta variant it got shortened to 4 days and maybe the omicron it may be shortened to even lesser than 2 uh, days so ideally we are doing an rt pcr test 72 hours before departure us has changed their guidance and they have mandated it to do it 24 hours before departure uk has said do it 48 hours before departure 
So the incubation period is anywhere there. Then you know that's only 70% of the time the RT-PCR is accurate. So 30% of the time you may be harboring the virus, but you may be tested negative. So the, the reason of frequent testing is you might have picked up the virus on the aircraft. It will take you three to five days to develop the disease. And therefore you have to get, you know what is the rule in Hong Kong? What, throughout the last 20 months, if you come from any part of planet Earth and you land into Hong Kong airport, you have to test before you depart. You have to test on arrival. You get institutionally quarantined for 14, 1, 4, 14 days. And after that, you get home quarantined for 7 days. And you keep testing it because the total COVID timetable is 21 days. But in India, the government of India said at least 7 days of home quarantine. And if in their 7 days there are no symptoms developed and you test negative, you are good. So your likelihood of being risk to yourself, your life, your near and dear ones, as well as people at large is less. So that is the reason there is a quarantine put in place and we expect people to follow that quarantine. So Nandalanji, your question is very correct. It is nothing to do with just foreigner or no foreigner. And I think that is very important. And Pradeep Sarvayaji is also asking a question. Ki, is vaccination should be made compulsory? That's what I'm going to ask Dr. Rahul. Dr. Rahul, should this vaccination be made compulsory? Because you made this very compelling point that it is really the vaccination which is the key driver. And even you just talked very nicely about the South African doctors. Uh, you know, so really that's very, very important. And then I'm going to take one more question, Dr. Rahul. Vishal Bure is asking, if a person never had COVID in the past, he got Omicron COVID, is there any way that he and she can get Delta or any other variant in the future? So, or somebody got Delta. Understood. Okay. Do you feel that you are safe? So I think let's answer the question from Pradeep Sarvayaji first that should vaccines be made compulsory. I just got some news trickling in uh, on the Twitter. I don't know the authenticity of that. I think I'll have to check it up. That Germany has made it now compulsory that unless you are vaccinated, you will not get employment. So I think um, in a democratic country, uh, making things compulsory become a, becomes a problem because it's ultimately uh, my body, my choice. And most people would uh, have their own opinion about it. But incentivizing like this, what Germany has done, that you get yourself vaccinated, you will be eligible for employment. I think that incentivizing makes a big difference. So we should probably incentivize people. Maybe, uh, you know, small, small things can be changed. Maybe uh, if they have a vaccine certificate, maybe they'll get 10% discount on a train ticket or a, or a bus pass or something like that. Maybe employment will be preferred for them. Maybe, you know, they could, you could have several things uh, which the government schemes can actually uh, actually implement as a part of it. So my belief is that vaccination should be made extensively available to everyone. Another thing, Pradeep ji, is that we feel that vaccines are available easily. I have doubt about the remote areas. And uh, me and Professor Joshi, both of us visit this place called Eskarjat which is uh, just an hour and a half out of Mumbai. And every time I go there, I find that people have very little knowledge about vaccine. So, you know, I think it should be the way it should be is like an election. When you, when you put up an election booth, most people have to travel a very short distance to go and cast their vote. Similarly, the vaccine should be, if not door-to-door -door available, should actually be available very close to their house so that they don't have to walk more than say half a kilometer or so to, to get themselves vaccinated. I think these are some of the things which we can do uh, to improve the vaccination. Uh, what was the second question? The second question was about Delta variant. So um, I think this is a very interesting question, Vishalji. Uh, we need to understand that any disease because of any variant of COVID-19 will give you some amount of immunity and that immunity will differ from person to person depending on your basic immune response to the disease so most people will develop antibodies which will be protective people who are on immunosuppressive therapy may not develop antibodies which may which will last long but still nevertheless the process of developing antibodies is much stronger when you get a disease rather than a vaccine as such but it does not confer you a lifelong immunity against any other variant or the same variant also. So forget about Delta. If you get a Delta or Omicron now, you have a 2% chance, which is what we call as 2% breakthrough infection seen in vaccinated population 
because that's the only population which we are actually able to study who have got a breakthrough infection, which is the uh, population where we know that we have given them antibodies. So there's a 2% chance right now from the data available that there could be a breakthrough infection and you could still have the Delta variant, you could still have the Omicron variant, Omicron variant or any other new variant which comes across. So the message here again comes back to the same thing what me and Professor Joshi say, mask up and get your vaccine shot if you have not done it still now. So I think another, um, you know, we've been all debating on the, this on TV and we've all been having our own um, thoughts on this. More or less, we concur on each other's thoughts. But Surender Bansalji is asking about vaccination in children and booster dose. I think people need to understand an additional dose, a booster dose, and a children vaccination. I think these are three different compartmentalized populations. First thing is uh, there are different types of vaccines. The current COVID vaccines are early generation vaccines. These early generation vaccines prevent you from dying and severe disease but they don't prevent you from getting COVID. So you can still get asymptomatic or mild COVID. So that is the first principle. So we are in global search for getting neutralizing vaccines or sterilizing vaccines, which may be from nasal root or injectable root or subunit vaccines, which is work in progress. That's the first thing. Secondly, in India, we have predominantly COVID shield, a little bit of Covaxin, rest of it is Hydus and Sputnik. Well, rest of the world has a lot of mRNA platform like a modern arm of Pfizer with a little bit of Astra, a little bit of Johnson & Johnson, which is adenovector. So the platform on which the, the, the vaccines are made is different. The third thing is that the Moderna, Pfizer and the adenovector Johnson and Astra, they have recommended a mix and match and they have recommended boosters. But the data shows that all these vaccines only were useful one and second dose for three to six months only. So the data was pretty disappointing. So don't get carried away by global recommendations. We need to generate Indian data, Indian science, and Indian guidelines. So the regulators are thinking that we are a large second wave, a large population had zero positivity of almost 90% in urban metros, like Delhi and Mumbai, and that was natural infection. And if you have got two vaccines, you are good because you have actually the natural infection was a booster. Same thing held true for children, which is why they have deferred and there has been a disagreement with experts that whether they should be an additional dose, whether they should be a, a booster dose or whether they should be a children's dose. So if you ask me if vaccines are sufficiently available, the first thing is we must vaccinate as many people as possible, as quickly as possible to people who have not got a single vaccine. Because first thing is we want to save every life, every Indian matters. Second is give the second dose if it is delayed. And if we have then a stock, which probably we have, then in this following hierarchy, we should administer the extra dose. First is extra dose for people who are moderately to severely immunocompromised. Second, and that is below three six months also it is okay. Second is to administer the booster dose, which has to be administered to people after six months who are in the healthcare worker space like us, in the frontline worker space, people who have comorbidities and elderly. And finally, pediatric vaccinations. First, we prioritize for people above 15 and 12 and then eventually to everybody. See, remember, COVID cannot be eradicated till you don't vaccinate every person on planet Earth with adequate vaccination. And currently, we know adequate vaccination probably includes third dose, probably after six months, and or a natural infection. So if you have got natural COVID with two doses, you are likely to be safe in absence of Omicron. And Omicron is likely to be mild. But all these are ifs and buts. This is informed speculation. So from a booster standpoint, third dose standpoint, children standpoint, should it be done? Yes. Are we ready for it? Probably not. Do we have generated adequate data on Indian population? Possibly not. Is the Indian population having sufficient antibodies and T-cell and does it have a hybrid immunity? Probably yes. So based on all these considerations, the government of India and their wisdom, which is centralized, the entangy body, headed by Dr. Aurora, will debate this, deliberate this and take a reasonable scientific consensus and will implement the policy in the future. Uh, we all feel that it should be done. Uh, there is no harm simultaneously doing it. If the vaccine supply is available, uh, I personally feel it should be done. If there is sufficient supply available, of course, our primary objective is very different. So, Dr. Rahul, I don't know what are your takes on this. And then probably we'll close down. We will we'll take one or two more questions and we'll close down. I have only one question for you, 
which Vishal already asked. Yeah, my, my take is exactly the same as what you said, sir. I have completely mm -hmm. concurred with what you said. Nothing new to add, nothing more to add, sir. So I'm going to do a quick rapid fire for you. Okay. Yeah. First is that uh, how long can the monoclonal antibody protection last? So approximately 60 to 90 days. But that's not why it should be used. It is not a, it is not a prevention, it is a treatment still. Our my, my, popular Mahim family doctor, Dr. Nanda Shimpi, asked that question. Uh, Vishal Bharat is asking the question, is povidon iodine gargle effective along with a mask? So there is no data to protect uh, or suggest that, that povidon iodine mask uh, gargle is effective, but mask is definitely effective. So if you're going to use povidon iodine along with that once in a day or twice in a day, it's not going to be harm, harmful to you. But uh, I, there is no data to actually support that. <clears throat> And the final thing is, Bimla Kapoor is asking, about 90 people are very reluctant to get the vaccine. And they are unable to go to center. So, uh, you know, the, what should be done there? So, I can tell you, I can share you with you that me, Professor Joshi and Professor Oak, all three of us had actually been called and uh, discussed about home vaccination by the highest authority in the States. And... Uh, Following that, uh, the court had even actually requested the state to vaccinate people. Uh, and there was a home-to-home, -home, door to door vaccination drive, which was undertaken in Mumbai. If I'm correct, 2,000 plus people were vaccinated. Professor Doshi, please correct me if I'm wrong with the numbers. Uh, 2,000 plus people were vaccinated from home to home. And I think you should go to your local ward office if you have people who are above 90 and ask them, request them to come home and vaccinate. This definitely can be done. It's not, there is a precedence to that. So, Professor Joshi, I think uh, one last question, um, uh, just just last mm -hmm. question from the viewer and we can close. Is Omicron more deadly than Delta? I think this should be the last question for the day. <clears throat> so, the answer is, the current suggestions do not suggest that it is more deadly. Microbiologically and virologically, it appears to be more deadly. But the clinical outcomes in the last three to four weeks, and Amit was asking this question, what is the duration of illness of people who have got Omicron in South Africa? It's only two to three weeks. So it's early days on Omicron. So only time will tell us uh, whether it will be uh, deadly or not. So I think uh, let us keep our fingers crossed. Let us hope, wish and pray that Omicron probably is less severe and less mild mm -hmm. and is evolutionarily the less virulent virus compared to the Delta strain. So with that, Dr. Rahul Pandit, thank you so much. And uh, again, once so again, I uh, thank all our viewers. And uh, we uh, have uh, once more the Dr. KK's Med Talks coming up very soon. And uh, that will be the 514 show tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.